Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday sermon, and we are going to be, we're going to start in uh, Matthew 24. So if you have your Bibles, we'll turn there. We are going to be continuing our study in Joel today, but we're going to start in Matthew 24. Let's go ahead and turn there. While you're turning there, just want to uh, let you know, we are going to have a sunrise service. We will not be having pancakes, but uh, sunrise Easter Sunday morning is April 4th uh, at the end of Buhack, uh, um, Buchanan Hollow Road, where you usually have it. Um, we invite you all to come, and that'll be a great time. And uh, I'll bring something more, but there will not be breakfast. And so we'll just have the sunrise service kind of starting on our way to get back to normal. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, also pray for Eric. He did um, opt for a hospice yesterday. Um, and this is a Friday when this is being recorded. And so just be praying uh, for him. Uh, we'll be having a special kind of graduation ceremony for Josh, his oldest son, his uh, a senior in high school. They're gonna have a little home. He's home on Marie Court. And so if you need that address, you want to visit him, let me know. Um, he'll be there under hospice care. He really needs prayer for pain management. That's really what he's struggling with right now. He's really physically hurting. He has asked for, for prayer on that, uh, um, for that matter. All right, so keep praying for him in that. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your kindness and blessings. We just pray, Father, for your continued work in our nation as we, <clears throat> Lord, draw closer, uh, Lord, to your return. And we pray for Eric, father, and his health. He's really struggling with pain. This cancer is, is in his abdomen and, and he can't hardly even move. And so we just pray, Lord, that uh, through hospice care, they can do some pain management, help him to spend the last uh, time that he has, whether it's a few days or a few years or a few months, whatever it might be, Lord, uh, that, Lord, you would help it to be pain-free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Also continue to pray for... Uh, uh, Jackie and uh, for Monica as their babies are due anytime. So we just pray for that. Um, so we're going to look at Matthew 24. Now we're going through the book of Joel and we um, talked last week. Joel's only got three chapters. The first chapter was all about a locust's infestation. And then chapter two of Joel was how that is compared to what he calls the day of the Lord. Uh, then in Acts chapter 2, when we saw the um, Holy Spirit come down and the tongues of fire, that that was actually uh, the beginning of, of what uh, Joel had predicted in Joel chapter 2, uh, that would be the last days. And so we are living in those last days. It's been 2,000 years, but we read the verses last week that a day is like a thousand years to God. And so in his timing, he's not one that any should perish. And so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to end Joel. But Joel is, chapter 3, talks about basically some of the things that are going to happen at God's judgment. Um, but the real lesson today is that you be ready. And we are told that during the end times, when Jesus returns, very few people will be ready. So we're going to look at that today about are you ready? So look at Matthew 24. We're going to look at verse 36. It says, the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So we've established that that day of the Lord, when Jesus returns, no one knows where when it's coming. But as it was in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, so God now compares his return to the flood, to when Noah lived. But we know about the times of Noah lived, that everyone's thoughts were evil continually. But there's, there's more to that, as God lays out in verse 38. For in those days before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and took them all away. And so will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
So when he compares the end times of the days of Noah, it's not in the realm of how sinful it was, although uh, that is going to be the case, but it is in the realm of how nobody was even expecting it. Nobody looked for it. Even as Noah warned the people, they just went along with their lives. And that is what we have in the, around the world in 2021. We are so kind of um, distracted by anything except for God and eternity that we don't even want to think about it. We don't want to be talking about religion. We want to talk about God. We want to talk about Jesus. And what happens is, uh, before you know it, uh, it's at the end times come, and it's going to be like it. Look at verse 40. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding in the mill. One taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour the Lord is coming. So that's kind of a, a description of the rapture, isn't it? Two are in the field. One is taken up to meet God in the air. Um, and God says, the world will not even be conscious of the fact that there is a God, let alone know that he's coming back. But he encourages you and I to be ready when the time comes. You don't know. Look at this, verse 43. Know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And so Liz and I were we'll be celebrating our 40th wedding anniversary coming up in a few weeks, uh, the week after Easter. So we've been married 40 years. And in the 40 years that we've been married, our home has been broken into one time. So if you take 40 times 365, uh, you can know that it's, you know, 12,000, more than 12,000 days we've been married. So the chances of us being broken into tonight is a one in over 12,000 uh, odds. But we're still gonna lock the doors. We still prepare our homes. We still make sure that everything is set in place. We lock the doors of the car and we prepare as if a thief could come, even though the odds are astronomical. Well, the odds that the Lord is coming back today, who knows what those are? We know that he's coming back. So you prepare, just as you prepare for a thief, that is most likely not coming tonight, but it could. And you need to be ready. Are you ready? Well, how do you get ready? How are you prepared for the return of the Lord? Well, we've been saying this for weeks. Repent. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. We're all sinners. Come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, he's risen from the dead. You'll be saved because he demonstrates his love towards you that while you were a sinner, he died for you. That's the story of the universe. Man sinned, separated them from God. The wages of, of death, uh, sin is death. Jesus paid that price. Whoever believes in that, will not perish, but have everlasting life. And now we wait and we preach that message until Jesus returns. And if he returns without you repenting, uh, then you will be separated from him for eternity. That's our message. Well, turn if you will to uh, 2 Timothy chapter three, 2 Timothy chapter three. In this chapter, we have another little bit of a, a hint about the end times. It says um, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 1. Know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of God but denying its power from such people, turn away. For this sort are those who creep into households, making captive, gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by lusts, always learning but never able to come 
to the knowledge of the truth. So perilous times come in the last days. God says to be ready. And if you go through that list, uh, we see that all through our, our culture today. We see it all through the world. And that's how it was in the days of Noah, evil continually. And so uh, the road we're on, our separation from God, which creates the immorality and all of those things you see in Timothy, uh, if we don't turn and have a revival, then those things are going to continue to grow more and more sinful. We've certainly seen that over the last decade or two. Um, will there be revival? There might be. There might be. Maybe the nation will repent as Nineveh did when Jonah came. Uh, what we do is we just keep preaching, repent, turn to God, don't forget who he is. And, and no matter what, that won't stop. We will just keep preaching, keep preaching. So now let's go to Joel. And as we look at Joel chapter three, uh, we're reminded that we are supposed to be ready for when these end times come and they're going to get perilous. Times will be perilous and you might say, well, pastor, they're perilous already. Uh, and they might be, but they, they, they could actually get worse. And so in chapter three, as Joel ends his uh, uh, sermon on this end times, last days. He starts with some of these perilous times. And remember, the last days, the purpose of it is for God to once and for all judge sin, remove it, throw it in the lake of fire, and then create that new heaven and that new earth. We talked about that last week. So verse one says, behold, in those days, what a that time I will bring back captives of Judah and Jerusalem. So that's kind of a gathering together. And when we see the Lord return, it is a gathering uh, and a separation of the tares from the wheat, uh, the sheep from the goats. And there's a gathering, you know, those will be caught up to meet him or gather with him in the air at the rapture. And in the return of Christ, we, we kind of rule and reign with him. And, and those separate finally, sin is dealt with. And righteousness is over here. And so that's that picture. It says, I will gather all nations, bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment. I enter into judgment with them there. Now, the, the word Jehoshaphat literally means uh, God will judge or God is judged. There's not really a specific place called Valley of Jehoshaphat that we know of that we can find. Uh, but there is a place where God will judge, and that's this valley. Why will he judge people? On account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have divided my land. Well, who scattered Israel among the nations? Well, it's been a whole host of people throughout the years, hasn't it? Israel has always been a target of Satan, and he's used many different nations, all the way from the Philistines all the way to Egyptians, to the Romans, uh, to the Nazi Germany, uh, to the uh, uh, far right Muslim extremes of today, um, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish sentiment all throughout history. Well, why? Well, because Satan knows that that's God's lineage of Jesus Christ. Look at verse three, they have cast lots for my people have given a boy as payment for harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. It got so evil that they were using children as a, 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 a payment, as currency. And let me tell you something today. We are obsessed with sex and alcohol. Look what it says, that they have given a boy as payment for a harlot and a girl for wine. and we have seen the whole, now this gives you an idea of where the world's at. Human trafficking is a major problem in this world today. It's an epidemic of taking girls and boys alike and using them to barter as currency, selling these young boys and young women. Abortion is rampant in our country. And so what we are seeing is we are doing exactly in the world today what was happening in verse three, that we are using our children for our own personal pleasure. And if they happen to be just the consequences of our, of our sexual activities, 
we just get rid of them. We just get rid of them. Or if we want, and, and we're not satisfied with our sexual activities, we'll go to children. It's horrific. And, and this is what God wants to end. And this is why when you look at these perilous times, many of the things that we see in the world today what was, what is what was happening in the days of Noah, in the days of Sodom, in the days of Gomorrah. And so we've got to be ready because of verses four through eight. And that is that payday is coming. You reap what you sow. Look what he says. Indeed, what you do to me, O Tyre and Sidon and the coast of Philistines, will you retaliate against me? But you retaliate, but if you retaliate against me, swift and speedily, I will return retaliation upon your head. And God says, if you think you're going to come after me and attack my children, the Bible says, of those who cause any of God's children to stumble, it's better than a millstone be hung around their neck and they're thrown into the depths of the sea. And God says, uh, there will be payday. So there's an old sermon um, down the south when Liz and I were living in Mississippi, and it's called Payday Someday. And it's the message of this, that sin has to be dealt with by God. It will be judged. Why? Because you have taken my silver, verse 5, and gold, have carried into your temples my prized possessions, the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you sold to the Greeks, that ye may remove them from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of that place to which you have sold them. I'll return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. They will sell them to the Sabians, to the people afar of off, for the Lord has spoken. You reap what you sow. And if you stand against God, that will turn back. The Bible says, talks about rolling a stone and it come rolling back on you or falling into the old pit that you dug. Psalm 2 says it this way. Why do nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress and in deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. And it talks about those who stand against God and those rulers who think that they can stand against God. And the answer to that is that God laughs at, at their folly and you reap what you sow. So what we have to remember that until the Lord comes and, and ends what we call the last days that we talked about started in Acts chapter one and especially in Acts chapter two when the Holy Spirit came down and continues until the Lord returns that we need to understand the war is not over. The war is not over. Look at verse nine. Proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 3, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, and he may plead, please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Onward, Christian soldiers. We are in a battle, a battle for morals, a battle for truth, a battle for souls. And, and that battle is won with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and the shield of faith. Ephesians 6, look at those things, the, the breastplate of righteousness to know what's right, the belt of truth to know what's truth, the helmet of salvation to know you're saved, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We arm ourselves every day with the preparation to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a war. It's a battle. We're going to win this war. That's no doubt about it. God has guaranteed it in Psalm 2 and other verses. But we got to keep fighting. And what happens is we get entangled with this world and we get like it was in the days of Noah, but we don't even, uh, 
are not even conscious that it's a spiritual war that we're in. Look at verse 10. It says, beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all the nations gathered together around. Cause your mighty ones to go down here, O Lord. So God says, look at, you got to take your, pl your, your plowshares and beat them into swords. In other words, if you're only taking care of what you have on this earth, now we got to farm and we got to work and we got to do those things, but God has to be the center of our attention. So you take those plowshares and God says, look at it's time for war. It's time for real estate, not, not go to church less. We need to be in church more, not to, to preach less. We need to preach more. And in this cancel culture of hate speech and all those things, the, the Bible is, it's going to be in that lineage of, of what people don't want to hear that Jesus is the only way to heaven and all other religions are wrong because only the Bible is the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am, uh, no one comes to the father except through me. Look at verse 12, let the nations be wakened and come up from the valley of Jehoshaphat for there where I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. That's that picture of, of the separation of the tares and the wheat. Verse 13, a, a pretty uh, uh, serious verse. It says, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come down for the rind press is full. The vats overflow for their wickedness is great. Well, what's that have to do with their wickedness in the wine press? Well, if you read Revelation 14, 20, it says this. The wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press, even to the horse bridles so it says that this this um armageddon war that there will be such a victory from god that the blood will race to the very bridle of the horse and this is what it's talking about that that you be ready because the lord is returning and victory will be his verse 14 multitudes of multitudes in the valley of decision and that's where most of us lie today in the valley of decision maybe that's where you are my decision has been made for me by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, while I was dead in my trespasses and sin, woke me up and, and placed within me a gift of faith. It, I don't, I'm not a Christian because of anything I've done. I'm not a Christian because of even what I believe. I'm a Christian because of the belief that God has mercifully placed within me. And, and when I heard the gospel on Easter Sunday, 1979, God took that and through his work made it real to me. But you're in the valley of decision. Are you kicking against the goats like Paul did? Would you surrender to him? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark. The stars will diminish its brightness. The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake. But the Lord will be a shelter to his people and a strength to the children of Israel. See, when you see the sun and the moon growing dark, that's always the very end of that tribulation period. That, that takes us to the end with, with the return of the Lord. So you shall know that I am the Lord God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and no alien shall ever pass through her again. Amen. What a time it's going to be. But until that Lord returns, we're in a war, we're in a battle every day. It's fighting for the truth, fighting for the gospel, fighting for the souls of men that need to hear what Christ has done for them. Are you ready? Do you live every day as if you're a soldier for Jesus Christ? Or are we entangled in the world so much that we are not able to meet the lost in the valley of decision to give them that information they need about jesus christ so the holy spirit faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and how do they will they hear unless someone is sent to them to tell them we need to bring people to that valley of decision and uh, because the lord is returning soon turn if you will to first thessalonians chapter five first thessalonians chapter five
again, we are in a war and Joel predicts it and First Thessalonians uh, takes us to more detail on it. First, chapter five of First Thessalonians, verse one, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. We, we don't need to know when the Lord's coming back. Like the thief in the night, we're ready. We prepared ourselves by giving ourselves to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Are you ready? For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains of a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. See, when people think everything is fine, and, and, and that's what they want. Boy, if we can just, it's that old John Lennon song, Imagine. Because imagine there's no religion, no hell below us, above us only sky. Wouldn't that be great? That's how the world sees it. It's just, if we just live in peace. But Jesus said, I didn't really come to bring peace. I, I, it, it's going to divide. The gospel divides. Marvel not if the world hates you. Put on the armor of God. Stand against the wiles of the devil. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but there are principalities and rulers of darkness in this present age. Look at verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. So this day should overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let those of us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope and salvation. Well, where have you heard the breastplate and the helmet before? It's the armor of God. For God did not appoint us to wrath to obtain salvation, through, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. We're not appointed. We don't have to be afraid of the return of Christ, of the day of the Lord. We don't have to be afraid of the tribulation. We don't have to be afraid of all that. Look at verse 10. Because he died for us, and whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether you're alive or dead, you have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. So put on that helmet of salvation, put on that breastplate of righteousness, put on that belt of truth, know the truth, know what's right, know how to be saved, and meet people in that valley of decision so that you can share what they need to know to be saved before he returns. Because when he returns, victory comes. Let's go back to Joel. We'll end up with these few verses. Verse 18, this is beautiful. These are really good verses. Joel 3, 18. It will come to pass in that day that the holy mountains shall drip new wine. The hills will flow with milk. The brooks of Judah be flooded with water. The fountain will flow from the house of the Lord. The water in the valley of the Acacias. Egypt shall be a desolation. Edom a desolate wilderness. Because of violence against the people of Judah. For they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall abide forever. Jerusalem, generation to generation. I will acquit them of guilt of bloodshed, whom I have not acquitted, for the Lord dwells in Zion. The presence of Jesus is, talks about that. When Jesus returns, there's that thousand years of, of peace on earth in which Jesus rules and reigns right there in Zion, in Jerusalem. And, and the, the wicked are done away with and there's nothing but basically heaven on earth. What a beautiful time that will be. And God says, look at, until we get there, prepare for war. Understand we win, victory in Jesus, but we, we're, we're not there yet. Uh, finally, let's close with Micah, uh, chapter four. Um, right here in the uh, Jonah, Mike, and Nahum. It's in the uh, Minor Prophets. And I wanted to just read this because it has a great picture of what we're talking about. Chapter 4 of Micah, verse 1. It will come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow in it. 
Many nations shall come and say, come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. We will walk in his path. For out of Zion, the Lord shall go forth and the word of the Lord in Jerusalem. He shall judge between many people, rebuke strong nations afar off. Look at verse three, the end of it. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up the sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. Verse five, for the people will walk each in the name of God and we will walk in the name of our Lord. There will not be war anymore. Now they've done the opposite. God tells you to take your plowshares and make them into swords because you're in a war. But then he says there'll come a time when he returns that you'll take those swords and you'll turn them back into the plowshares. Look at the Lord is returning and it's going to be a great, amazing thing when it happens. Uh, but until it happens, we have work to do. We have a battle to fight and we need to put on the whole armor of God as a soldier, onward Christian soldiers, not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. I hope you're prepared for the thief when he comes. We don't know the day or the hour. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you need to. This is the valley of decision for you. And you need to decide to follow Christ. Because if you stand against him, you will reap what you sow. And for a Christian, don't kind of rest in your laurels and rest in your peace. Put on the whole army of God and be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time, uh, for this lesson. Help us to be ready and willing. Uh, to serve you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, remember Easter sunrise service on the 4th. Keep praying for Eric. We'll keep you updated on how those things are going. Thank you so much.